stage is dimly lit, spotlight focused on the center. A chef, dressed in a professional chef's uniform, steps into the spotlight. Chef, with conviction and passion. I don't let a stem on loaf or bread or wheel of cheese tell me what or when to eat it. No. I refuse to be confined by the narrow expectations of popular opinion or blind adherence to science. Who are they to dictate my culinary choices? Imagine if I had listened. What would I have served to the thousands of hungry customers who rely on me? Air. Sawdust? Perhaps even the remnants of you skinny pig bedding that has overrun my home and destroyed my many marriages? Oh, the horror. Grimaces, as if recalling the chaos. But fear not, for I have triumphed. I ask you. Would the esteemed garden club dare to sample my deceased cat's hairballs world-famous, homemade patties? Believe me, my dishes have never received a believable complaint. Chuckles confidently. You see, 30 years in food industry have taught me more than any Rachel Ray cooking show or subscription frozen food box ever could. I have transcended those limitations. Surf safe. How? Merely a puppet to the meat and loaf industries, strings tightly wound around the neck. Strangling the very essence that once nourished the consumer's souls. Pauses, as if reflecting on the consequences. Can you, my friends, look your grandmother or pee paw in the eyes and honestly say that questionable ingredient is Recognize just a caper? In English, or would you spend the night, Crotenbug, steel wool in hand, scrubbing with powder the bleach, tears mixing with water, chanting unclean unclean until you pass out, burdened with a water bill you can't afford? Looks to the audience, seeking understanding. Honestly, have I changed? No. A little steak sauce. A dash of French onion, and that same burger that you just gotta try transforms from a momentary disaster to a triumph of flavor. It takes flight, gliding gracefully from the sludge between the fryer and flat top, only to be savored by those who dare to indulge. Proudly raises a hand in triumph. But here's a little secret. To keep my restaurant afloat all those years and pay off those haunting court fees, I unplug the refrigerators at night. Oh, the wonders of preservation. Most food does not demand the cold embrace of refrigeration. My pot of chili simmered throughout the entire summer, a testament to the power of culinary preservation. Knots as if acknowledging a victory. And when customers became sensitive, I merely added hot sauce and vinegar. Chemical wonders that obliterate bacteria and viruses at the atomic level. A quick swipe of my trusty UV light, and that rotten gumbo is transformed into soup of the day, fit for royalty and nuns alike. Smiles mischievously. But let me tell you, my friends, it wasn't just about cooking. Even after paying restitution, I pinched pennies until my hands reeked of copper. They tried to take everything, courts, judges, counsellors, ex-wives, district attorneys, doctors, and relentless debt collectors. Yet, they couldn't take the lessons I instilled in my many, many children. Pauses, a mix of determination and sadness. We went to Chuck E. Cheese and Burger King all the time, not for the games or paper crowns, but to impart the truths that cannot be found on Google or us Jeeves. I would look them in the eyes and tell them what had been passed down for generations we are all children of God, but if we can't fill these strollers with ketchup packets and toilet paper, your daddy will lose the restaurant to the bank. Our family would be scattered, torn apart. Destined for old-timey orphanages across the country, and perhaps even parts of Indonesia. The young ones would spend their days pulling the strings off celery for the amusement of industry tycoons, while nights would be spent picking 
drying, and mashing whatever so-called superfood is in vogue. The wisdom of Barney and the laughter of your beloved sponge will be replaced by an old, angry fat man hurling obscenities, denying you even a glimpse of the sun every time you miss a deadline. But it's the older kids who face the harshest fate. The copper mines, oh boy, they have a funny way of revealing the best and worst in people. And you don't even want to know how many lives are lost for the sake of your precious tungsten or whatever technological flavor of the week 